everybody can? Everybody up here? Everybody got their gear in? It's in gear. Are you ready? Whoa, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. yeah. Someone's got to hold on me, yeah. Oh, oh, it must be love. Oh, 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 something's got to hold on me right now, child. Oh, it must be love. Let me tell you now, I got a feeling I feel so strange. Everything about me seems to have changed. Step by step, I got a brand new walk. I even sound sweeter when I talk. I said, whoa, whoa. Oh. Oh, 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 I said, baby, oh, it must be love, you know it must be love, yeah, someone's got to hold on me, yeah, oh, it must be love, oh, 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 oh something's got to hold on me right now, child, oh, it must be love, let me tell you now, now I've never felt like this before, Someone's got a hold of me and won't let go Believe I'd die if I only could I should feel strange, but it sure feels good I said, oh, 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 oh. I said, baby, oh, oh, it must be love You know it must be love Let me tell you now, my heart feels heavy We feel like we're shaking on but I feel alright I never felt like this before Something's got a hold of me and won't let go I never thought it could happen to me Got me happy with a misery I never thought it could be this way Lord, you're gonna put a magic on me I said, whoa, whoa, oh morning. Welcome to Unity of Dayton. I'm Christine Wilson. I'll be your platform assistant today. And I'm going to start by asking everybody to stand up and sing, Choose to See. I 
moment now to acknowledge our Christ candle and celebrate the Christ within each of us, knowing we are divine expressions of God. Let's all say our mission statement together. We welcome all as we create loving community, teach universal truth, practice spiritual principles, and live life abundantly. Do we have any visitors here today for the first time? Brave enough to raise your hand? Anybody? Okay, awesome. The, the ushers will bring you a welcome packet if you keep your hand up for just a second so they can find you. Lisa, there's one over here. I'll give her a second. Thank you for visiting us today. We're very happy to have you, and we hope you found your new home. Now we can all talk to each other, greet each other, handshakes, hugs, whatever. Namaste bow. Let's say hello. Let's all return to our seats and remain standing. And we will be singing, I am a light. I'm living love every day. I'm living love every day. I'm 
quite a few things, actually. Um, today at 1230, Patty McCormick will present a new Make It and Take It aromatherapy workshop, where you will have the opportunity to use various aromatherapy products like hand soap, bath salt, and beeswax candles. Patty, I think I saw you come in. Are you there? You want to say something real quick? Thank you, Patty. So if you've made the decision to become a member of Unity of Dayton, or you're thinking about it, or you're already a member and want to refresh your course in Unity Principles, there will be a class on Saturday, November 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Reverend Sharon will delve in depth into Unity teachings. Lunch will be provided, so please sign up in the lobby so we have a count for lunch. Um, you can still donate some Christmas cards and postage stamps for our care and compassion team to use for holiday greetings. Um, Gloria and Beth and Linda have been writing their little fingers off addressing cards, and they still could use a few more cards to send out. Next Saturday, everybody needs to be here next Saturday. It's our holiday bazaar. Um, we've been planning for this for like six months, and we are ready. We have a full house of crafters and vendors ready to sell their wares. We have lots of door prizes and raffle and all kinds of food. So there's some flyers in the lobby. If you want to take some with you, maybe drop them off where you go shopping, leave them around various places. Remember to tell your family, your friends. Um, bring everybody next Saturday between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And then if you volunteered to help with um, baking, please make sure you bring your goodies as early as possible next Saturday morning. Um, the uh, bazaar actually starts at 10, but we'll be here at 8 o'clock because we have vendors coming in to set up, so you can bring your, your food in any time then. And if you, we could still use a couple volunteers to help afterwards. Um, if you haven't signed up and you'd like to help with some of the cleanup afterwards, please see me after the service. And next Sunday is Reiki Sunday. Plan to stay after the service and allow our Reiki practitioners to take you to a place of complete relaxation and healing. And there's going to be a lot of us after next Saturday's Bazaar that need to come to Reiki next <laughs> Sunday. Believe me. Okay. We will be ready for this. 
We're beginning our annual collection for Toys for Tots campaign. Our holiday collection boxes haven't arrived yet, but you can still bring in your unwrapped toys for children ages 12 and under. Um, our outdoor collection event for Toys for Tots will be on Saturday, December 2nd, from noon until 4 o'clock. And you can find all of our events on Facebook, on the website, and there's a new November calendar out in the lobby, so please take one of those, too. And now I turn it back over to the band. I close my eyes. I open my heart. I take a deep breath. Let the healing start I lift my hands I plant my feet I let love in I feel the beat That's calling, calling, calling us to rise Rise, spirit rise up Rise in me, I ready my soul, I clear my mind, I'm here and now, in present time, I feel the power of a thousand suns, lighting up the dark, oh we rise as one.
The daily word for Sunday, November 5th, is transition. I flow with life's changes. Looking at my image in a mirror, I see myself at times when my life was changing. I may be a grinning child who lost a tooth for the first time, or the proud student on graduation day. Perhaps I recall my ambitions as I embarked on my career. Maybe I feel a tinge of sadness revisiting the pain of the loss I felt during my more difficult transitions. As I have grown spiritually, I have learned to flow with life's transitions. I know that even during the most challenging changes, God remains a constant presence. I will always be divinely protected and one in God with the people I have loved. Moving willingly and gratefully through my transition deepens and strengthens my awareness of God and of myself as a divine being. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. And now here's Reverend Sharon. All right, let us close our eyes and let us take a deep breath in and just exhale, letting it go. And let's take a moment going to heart center and visualizing it wide open and the flow of all that is the love of the Creator is flowing through, through us and out into the world. And as this light flows, it flows through our being, every cell, every fiber, pushing out all darkness, all illness, all negativity, all regrets, all grudges, replaced by the light and the peace that is love. And let us take a moment to reflect on how precious we are and loved by the Creator. Allow that love to flow through you. And this love and this light elevates us, taking us beyond the physical into the spiritual realm of the universe. And we take this moment to say, Creator, show me what love feels like from you. release all barriers and conditions. And we focus on the world, the earth before us. We know what love from the Creator feels like. Open and flowing and ever-present. And we affirm that love flowing through us out into the world. And we see the light of God, the Christ light within spark over and over and over, multiplying 
a hundred times a hundred, a thousand times a thousand, a million times a million, and infinite. And we are witness to the wholeness of humanity. And we are witness that the earth has been healed, has been balanced. We are witness to the love of all that is. And that as it flows through, all darkness dissipates. The Christ has awakened in humanity. The Christ has awakened in you and in me. We live in the presence of love. Put your hand on your heart, your hands. And divine beloved, we are grateful to know love, to be love, to be a channel for love. We are grateful to be open and to know that we are stewards of love and that your work is done through all of humanity coming together and with faith we see the harvest and the oneness of love. We are grateful, and so it is. Now take a moment to come back into your awareness, to come back into your body, to come back to clarity and understanding, to be open. Move your shoulders, move your hands, move your feet. And you are present, and you are here, open and centered in love. So it is. Amen. When you're there, what's that sound of love make for you? I meant to me that's a sound like, ah, oh, it's it plays music for me. So let's open your hands and repeat after me. Divine beloved, I am grateful to be love. I am grateful to serve in love. I am grateful my integrity is love based. And in faith, I move forward in love. Knowing all is well. And your work is done. And so it is. Amen. Feel elevated? Yeah, let's just stay there, right? So today's topic, elevating consciousness. And um, I like to visualize this as like the elevator in a building, Right? So you, the elevator can go down to the basement, it can be on the ground floor, it can go up a couple of levels, and then we have what I call the penthouse. And so this is kind of like our journey. We start at one vibration, a place of energy, and we have the opportunity to move up floor to floor to floor within our consciousness, within that state. And how do we do that? Oftentimes it's uncomfortable. The elevator gets stuck and the door won't open. <laughs> Sometimes it's resistance. Like, I don't want to go up there. I, want to I know what's going on here. And that's the thing that happens with our ego, right? I don't want to go. And I don't know about you, but I don't like a crowded elevator. So if there's 50 people in the elevator, I'm getting off, right? And sometimes, so, in that, it, so as we're in that elevator, in from the spiritual perspective, all those things, like where I get out of the elevator from in the physical world, all of this too many people, you know, it's like, that's what's in our mind. We have all of this jumble. We have all of these 
words. We have all of these reasons to hold us back. So we have a lot of voices in our elevator that keep us from rising because we focus on those things, on those words, on the negativity, on the what ifs, on the stress, on the fear. But where I want to go with this is I want to take you on a journey of going up and understanding how to utilize your consciousness in this physical world to grow and evolve. And Lisa, first slide, please. And we're going to leave this up for a little bit. So I'm, and I'm using quotes from Charles and Jesus today. Words are also seeds, and when dropped into the invisible spiritual substance, they grow and bring forth after their kind. So our, the idea is that we want to go from the basement to the penthouse. Now, I don't want you to get stuck in your head and say, I don't need everything that's in a penthouse. Okay? I want you to stop that right now. I don't want you to have that limiting belief. You can, be, you can live life simple and still be in the penthouse. Okay? Because I don't want you doing this metaphysical malpractice and spiritual bypassing on yourself. But whatever, so we're only going to get to the floor where our belief system is. We're going to live on that floor where our belief system is. So if we're in the basement, we feel like we can't get out of the basement. We feel like, okay, it's struggle. Oh, it's a little dark down here. It's dingy. It's dusty. It's cold. I'm alone, you know. And who, I mean, really, I don't know a lot of people that really want to say, oh, I want to spend the night in a basement, right? Unless it's been refinished. <laughs> we, but we, we work. And, and if it's through this life or if it's through lifetimes, whatever you believe in that, it's every moment we have, is a conscious choice to change, to elevate, to go up to the next step. But what we do is we attract, again, our energy attracts. Our, it comes to us based on our thoughts, what we're saying, what we're thinking, what we're doing. And our chakras, I'm going to talk a moment just about chakras. So the chakras spin, and they bring in energy, and this is not a chakra class. But the chakra will draw to you the energy of where you are at in your consciousness, your subconsciousness of what you believe. So it's like that magnet that draws to you what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you're believing, the limits that you have put on yourself. And we have a tendency to say, oh, oh, that penthouse must be nice, but what about the person that lives in it? Because, you know, they must have a lot of money and think that they're better because they're overlooking all of us peasants down here. We judge quickly. We judge quickly because we're not there. And we're judging them to make us feel better, to make ourselves feel better. And we judge us. Like, I can't get there. Well, this is how I was raised, and this is just how it is. And this is just me. It's just how I was raised. I was raised to be negative, and so... I'm going to be negative. So that is the vibration that we'll have and the opportunity to complain about everything. To complain about everything, to get frustrated because it's not working. But we have to open ourselves up. We have to be open in alignment with this energy. And it goes with the same with the energy of money. If we're focused on what's not good, if we're focused on lack, if we're focused on not having enough, we have also blocked ourselves up from receiving the energy of what we call money. And you could say, well, I don't really need money. But let me share something with you. Money is an exchange of energy. Money is not yours and it doesn't belong to you. It comes from the divine. And it comes from the divine in the way that you believe that it can, in the way that you're open to receiving it and exchanging it. But it is free-flowing if you open the door. If you allow yourself to know that, that what you desire, the money can be there for that. If you can believe it, but you have to make yourself in alignment with whatever that is. And it could be that today all you want is a winter coat. It could be all that you want. Maybe aren't even, you don't even know designers. You're not even concerned about a designer coat. You just want a winter coat. And I, and I know a person in this room that has conversations with God all the time. I'm not going to say her name, Reverend Gloria, but, 
but has these conversations all the time with God about what she wants, what she desires, what she needs. And Gloria, are those not fulfilled? <laughs> they are, right? But she's open. But, but she's not saying, I want a, you know, 2024 Mercedes. Now, if, but if she wanted one, she could ask for it, okay? Because she, she's going to be open to the energy of that when she is ready, okay? If that is her choice. But it is being thankful for what we have. But it's also, in elevating our consciousness means that we have to put uh, that ego that is fearful aside. We have to allow... So, you know, in, in a couple, I don't know, a month or so ago, I talked about principles over personality. So the, the, the personality of the ego, we put it aside and we live the principles that Jesus was teaching. We live the principles of being in alignment to knowing that these desires can be met. And that we can want what we want, we can desire what we desire. And to me, it's even from the physical level to the spiritual level, but we have to be open. We have to give room for new information. We have to give room for new feelings. And so the more we are aligned with the feeling of the desire, the higher we go, all right? So imagine that you have the penthouse, all right? And that it, you know, and it might even have, like you might, because of the penthouse, you might have an outdoor pool and a barbecue and a deck and all the things that go with it. How, what does that feel like to you? Like, it's always about, like, our next step. We haven't been there for so, before. So it could be that, again, you're thinking, well, I've just never owned a house. I just want to own a house. Well, what does that feel like? And, again, it would feel like a penthouse because if you haven't owned a house... It'd feel like, regardless of the size, if you want a tiny house or a mansion, but you align yourself with it by thanking God for giving it to you, for bringing it to you. But you live as if that is in that stage. You're putting that energy there. And you are not focused on all the reasons why you can't do it or why, oh my gosh, now I've got to go through 5,000 years of clutter and hoarding and I can't get there. Because this is what we do on a spiritual level. We have all of these what ifs that keep us from taking that next step. And those what ifs come from the ego because it's like, okay, I, I know what my comfort is. I don't like it, but I know how to live in that. But I don't want to be in that. We want to be more than that. We want to elevate. We want to shift. We want to raise that energy. And Lisa, if you take us to the next quote. Therefore, I say unto you, what, thing, what, what things so every, ever ye desire, I can't see it because there's a glare, so I'm going to step down. Whatever things so ever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. All right? Yeah. Amen, right? So it's believing. And so in the meditation I took you through, and that I've been taking you through the last three Sundays, have been about the world is healed. Not about, okay, God, please help us get our, you know, out of our heads. It's the world is heal, healed. So it's believing that. So this is even from, again, needing a, something physical to be taken care of to being open of knowing on that spiritual level there is room for my growth. There is room for me to get it. I mean, don't we in unity call ourselves truth seekers? Okay, so I, I also want to say, let's add to that. I'm not just a truth seeker. I'm a truth applier or I'm a truth doer. Because, like, it's kind of like truth seeker might, might even give us that idea, well, I'm seeking it, but I'll work on it tomorrow. So I'm seeking it, but I'll work on it tomorrow or the next day or the next day. When everything in my life gets in order, then I will apply the teachings of metaphysics. When they're at their worst, it's like we need to have what I'm going to call the come to Jesus meeting. Come to God, go to Jesus, get down and say, help me through this, give me clarity, give me support. I am relinquishing what I have to, to allow you to do your work. But get me out of the way. Get me out of the way. 
And I don't know about some of you, but like, I'm rooted through China, and getting me out of the way is not an easy thing. And I'm like, Archangel Michael, come with the, not the sword, but the axe. Cut out, cut this tree down. This tree that is not being flexible. This tree that is not willing to grow, to shift, that is in fear. Why? We don't grow because of fear. We don't grow because we don't know how. We don't grow because we live in a limitation of beliefs. And we weren't taught how. And so some people will say, well, that person on the penthouse, living on the penthouse, they get their money through robbing everybody and doing crooked deals. And money just comes to them. And I'm a good person. Why doesn't it come to me? Do you know what? There is that part of them that is open to be in an alignment with the divine and attracting what is theirs. And, and the rest is part of their journey and that they will learn and they will grow, but it's not ours to judge. But that's why. They believe it's theirs to have. They believe it is their birthright. And it's not just their birthright. It's our birthright. We inherited the kingdom. Not like, okay, I'm giving you a grand, grand, a grand, a grand of sand. A, a grain of sand. I am giving you a grain of sand. And that's, that's your part of the kingdom. It's not. The whole kingdom is ours. We cannot deplete the universe. We cannot deplete God. It's bigger than us. It's works done. We're the ones that are too blind to see it. We're closing our eyes off from the good. We're closing ourselves off from the opportunity of growing and moving. And that's what Jesus talks about is seeing that there's the harvest in the field, seeing that things have moved. Seeing it. Lisa, next slide, please. So this is Charles, and this is one of my favorite quotes because I try to really get into it. I fairly sizzle with, sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to that which is mine to do. Amen, praise the Lord, okay? <laughs> this is what ours is to do, is to sizzle with zeal and excitement, and enthusiasm to do what is ours to do, which is to elevate our consciousness and expand and to go up and to go up and to go up and to believe that it is already done, that God, the creator, has already opened the door and paved the way that it is already created out here in the universe. And it's up to us to keep giving thanks and to acknowledge and to just do what is ours to do and not to control the situation. So remember, God's driving the, the, show, uh, the limo. God's driving it. We're sitting in the back. Okay? We're letting God lead. And we're doing life with joy. We're living life with joy and excitement, and with the positive movement which we have been blessed with, we always have a choice. And uh, to quote Gabrielle Bernstein, um, her book, We're a Super Attractor. And I can tell you, I know how to attract garbage. <laughs> been good at that. I know how to attract mediocre. Been good at that. And I know how to attract what is good. Been good at that. But sometimes I get off the train. You know, I, the elevator gets stuck and I get caught up and I'm looking through that, what we call the rear view mirror. But it's there. The light is always there. The opportunity is always there. And one more time, Lisa. So this is Jesus talking to a man about having faith to heal his son who is having um, epileptic fits. And Jesus says, Yes, said Jesus, if you yourself can, everything is possible for the person who has faith. And what he's telling this man is that, yes, you can do this. You have to have the faith. And the man says, I have faith. Teach me how to let go of my unfaith. 
Okay, so I'm Sharonizing it, but that's. But he's saying, "Help me to not have. Help me to let go of what I do, the the faith I lack. I have faith in you. I have faith to start building, so that each of us with faith. And it's like again, not that I will believe it when I see it. Okay, yay you, you know. Um, but it's yay me, whoever might say that. But it's like I believe and I see with faith. And so in these meditations that I've been taking you through, I, we're, we're visiting our healed world. We're visiting our bodies that are fully healed and recovered. And they are healed and recovered if you are willing to see it with faith. So it is yours. But let's get on the elevator and let's be willing to take it one level at a time into the energy that we deserve, into the energy that you are here to be. And again, you are that individual, wonderful expression of God and no one can express God like you do. So quit pausing the elevator. Get on it and ride to the top. And let your light shine. And namaste. Thank you. Grab the mic. Okay, now this is our opportunity as the ushers come forward to show our love and our commitment to unity of Dayton through our tithes and our offerings. So please take them out, hold them in your hand, infuse them with your love, and affirm with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. Before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around. Reverend Sharon, will you bless our, our offerings today? Divine Beloved, we are so grateful that we are elevating our consciousness and prosperity flows like it never has before. And it flows through us and into this wonderful community where it can continue to serve the community and outside of this community. We are grateful for all of our good works, and we are grateful to share what is ours to share. We are blessed, and we are grateful, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Amen.
do not think we have any children today, maybe, uh uh, no, no children today, but we're going to sing Tome anyway. So let's all sing Walking in the Light. If we're walking in the light, in the light, in the light, we are walking in the light, in the light of God, in the light. Let's bless all of our children who are not here with us today, but they are here with us. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. And we love you just the way you are, one with God. And now please all rise, join hands. Let's sing peace on earth. surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you. Have a great week. And remember to be here Saturday for the bazaar. Your love is lifting me higher than I've ever been lifted before.